This is Jason Canigan right in the middle of a naval battle here with Atlantic Fleet. I am running the battleship Queen Elizabeth and we're firing on some nasty Third Reich. Yeah, check out the <laughs> check out the flags. Ooh, nasty. Third Reich freighters here that we're gonna take out just to show you. I've moved a little bit. I'm going to change to um, high explosive shells because these are not battleships I'm facing. Now we'll note here some data has come up here and uh, I'm seeing the distance and elevation and that of the guns that I could use. Now that's just an estimate. It is not 100% correct. So, you know, I'm going to shoot where it says and then we're going to see what happens. One thing about this game is it's very satisfying when you get hits like like that. <laughs> so it's done. I am running a battleship after all. And we've hit it with several high explosive shells. So now they get a turn to move. I'm going to turn and do the old keep the broadside facing the enemy thing. We'll go for that one. 15.6. Okay. So that's it might overshoot, it might undershoot. I'm going to try it about there, though, and we'll see. Ah, we shot all around him, but didn't hit him. Talk about a miraculous. Oh, no, we got him after all. The explosions just happened after. And there is a bit of a time... ...gap here. <laughs> just like that. Um, let's target this sucker and see what happens. 10.8. So it is not an insta kill anyway. It's, I'm going to shoot and see what happens basically. Um, I've been on target all three times, fortunately. So that's fun. It's very satisfying. We can zoom in on these ships, we can look underneath at what happens to them. Look at that. <laughs> it's sinking right now. Uh, and there's often oil slicks that come in the water. This one's just sinking and burning. And sometimes they turn over. You can see explosion impact on the hull. I like the jets of gaseous air escaping. And it looks to me like it's tilting. Let's see what the others are up to. That's me. And it would appear the others have already disappeared beneath the surface. <laughs> well, look at that. Holes blown in it and everything. Huh? <laughs> look at that. Lifeboats are still on. That's a bad sign. So just for fun, let's back out here. Go into a single battle. They give you a bunch of pre-made things from history. We're going to do the Battle of the Denmark Strait. Very famous engagement in real life. Germans have made two very large battleships. Biggest in the world. The Bismarck and the Tirpitz at the time. And the Tirpitz was hanging out in Norway. And the Bismarck was trying to break out into the Atlantic. And, and just this one ship scared the hell out of the British so much they kept a fleet tied up here in England just to make sure that if this thing tried to come out they could stop it or do something about it. Now <laughs> it had come out and secretly gotten to this far and was trying to break out into the northern Atlantic and remember there's convoy shipping going across here all the time as uh, everybody's trying to supply the, uh, the allies over here. Obviously the date is early uh, Americans have not officially entered the war yet, but they are still doing lend-lease and supplying and that. And so the only two British ships that were able to engage the Bismarck and the uh, Prince Wigan, probably mispronouncing that, it's not Eugene, <laughs> uh, were the Hood, which was a very old battleship. It was, it was the flagship of the British Navy, but uh, it was outdated and had been refit once, but it was going to be uh, decommissioned sooner or later. 
<laughs> it wasn't a, you know, it was a fairly large ship, but it wasn't really high tech for the time. And also another ship called the Prince of Wales was uh, hanging out with it. And they were able to get there and engage the Bismarck and um, Prince Wigan. And it, some some bad, bad stuff happened. Uh, somebody got a lucky shot. I think it was the Bismarck and hit the hood just the right way and the hood maybe they hit them in the magazine or something off to check but uh, the hood just blew up boom you know and this was really bad for the British public's morale because the flagship of the Navy just got sunk in like one shot you know? <laughs> and uh, this was a time you know when when the armies were rolling across Europe and it looked like Germany was pretty invincible the bombings were happening and uh, this this was a pretty nasty time so <laughs> this recreates uh, the, the engagement here so in real life Hood got sunk Prince of Wales got beat up pretty badly and the Bismarck uh, just sailed out into the North Atlantic where it was dealt with uh, because pretty much uh, Churchill said that's it get that sucker <laughs> and, uh, and they put a lot of resources on sinking that that ship and uh, it was finally taken out by a bunch of torpedo bombers that found it and just continually hit it until the rudder got jammed and you can actually see the course it, they, they were off the coast of uh, France trying to get into what would have been a friendly port for the Germans but they couldn't steer and so they were just ending up going around in circles and uh, proving that large ships by themselves were not a very good idea you really do need a balanced navy and in spite of the fact that the the German planners thought that having the biggest and the best of everything just by itself and not having a whole group of different strengths and sizes and mobility choices available to them it didn't turn out very well so we're going to try this out uh, this gives the initiative and the play to the British so I'm going to start with that so I'll be playing uh, the two ships that <laughs> didn't do very well so here we have uh, the Prince of Wales and over here we have the hood and these are these are pretty nice It's just a, saying that so that uh, I know which this should say the hood, but you know, very long ship. It's good to know they've got these rescue boys sitting there, and uh, it is a murky day. The enemy is there, so we can we can see them. There's options in this game for escaping. If things go badly, we can kind of start issuing smoke and steering away from the enemy and if we can do that for three turns then we're good now uh, I've played this level once before and I can tell you the Bismarck is very hard to sink <laughs> very very hard so I'm going to concentrate my fire initially uh, on the Prince Wagon and we're gonna do that First, by making a bit of a turn here, I don't want smoke on. And we want definitely our our Arthur <laughs> armor-piercing shells. And uh, 20.7 degrees. Okay. High explosive will not do as well. Let's try around 21 and give this a shot. So the battle begins. And we've overshot. Maybe, maybe not. Not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, I'm happy anytime I get a hit, you know. So let's move the hood in the opposite direction because I actually screwed up my turn <laughs> last time so that I have more of a broadside. Now, the danger there is that I'm presenting a larger target profile to my enemy as well, but I want all my guns to be able to fire. Now, I don't think I turned enough to let that be the case. Okay, so let's give this a shot at around 22. And yep, just as I thought, we were only able to fire our front 
cannons. Ah, overshot. So the Bismarck is moving and firing. And remember, this is one of the two biggest ships in the world at the time. <laughs> it's scary. We got a minor hit. Okay, so we're back to the Prince of Wales. I'm going to do a pretty harsh um, turn here. I really need to get my direction straight. Port is towards the port. Starboard is away from the port. And the way they were normally sailing home was north, so port is always on the right. Okay, so we got an 18.1 elevation, that means we've closed quite a bit. Uh, I'm just going to go with a hair over 18. And uh, let's pop a few caps. And we're short. A lot. Thanks, ranging. Hmm. So what do we got here? 20.7, okay. I'm gonna move in, fire. Now we were a little long last time. So let's see how this turns out. Now we got one hit. Interesting, I really like that. Live. Uh-oh. <laughs> the hood has been hit, there is a fire on the deck. long too. Ah, uh, we're on fire. The hood's on fire. It's smoking this billowy brownish gray smoke. This is not good, people. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go for a shot on the Bismarck this time. 20.5 degrees. All right, I'm gonna shoot a little long, maybe. Let's see. Pew. Ooh, this, this looks... Oh! <laughs> I was so excited. I thought I was getting a shot there. So I'm going to turn inwards a little bit here. And we're going to shoot at that Bismarck. That nasty, nasty Bismarck. So we're we are outmatched here. This is something to remember. Um, but I like the mood of the game. I like the, the look and feel of the game. It is fun to play if you like turn-based action. I don't like real-time strategy games. Uh, maybe they're too stressful for me. I don't know. But uh, real-time strategy games do have a, an interesting development that happens where you're dealing with something over on the left side of the screen and then the right goes to hell, you know, and then you got to suddenly deal with that. I did like StarCraft years and years ago. Hmm. And it looks like the hood is just taking a pounding here. Alright, well I'm going to really do a wide swing here and uh, face the Bismarck with this profile of gunnery. 18.2, okay. I think we've been short. No, maybe we've been long. Hmm. I, I really need to... There are records for this kind of thing in the game. We've got a map here. And, uh, and there are records somewhere, I just don't know how to use the menu <laughs> yet. I only got the game uh, a day or two ago, and I, I've only played through maybe five things, so... We're going to give this a shot, and with our follow cam. Ah, so close, so close. Um, I'm going to continue my my turn in here. I'm a little bit concerned actually. 19.8. Alright, we're gonna go straight on at 20. Give this a shot. Only our front batteries could fire. Ah. Wow, they're getting real close there. Ooh, we got another hit! Ugh. Oh my. 
this is what usually happens I, I, I'm guessing <laughs> because uh, the two times I've played I I, uh, I had to disengage with the Prince of Wales after the hood was sunk the last time I played this through so it's not I'm just gonna keep going straight because I like the flavor profile 19.6 all right well we keep overshooting so I'm gonna draw it back to about 19 maybe a little bit more than 19 and we'll give that a shot oh. Oh, it's so close, so close. Uh, and of course our fiery deck of the hood. I'm going to continue our curve in. And what do we got here? 18.7. more than 18 we'll see what happens if it's short it's short this looks good oh I think we got a hit I, we got a hit we got a hit mm -hmm. <laughs> so this game can get quite complicated uh, obviously there's only four ships here but uh, you can get engagements where oh oh nice hit guys Ah, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, airplanes and submarines and, and uh, multiple <laughs> multiple engagements going on at any point in time. So this is this is quite a simplistic action, in spite of the fact that the Bismarck is beating the tar out of my other ships here. I think I'm short all the time. Oh, well, we got a hit. We didn't get a hit out of that spread. Nineteen. I'm going to go with about nineteen and a half. I'm presenting a really small profile here. Nope really overshot it there in the hopes that they'll have trouble hitting me. Yoinks! <laughs> hmm. What to do, what to do. So you can imagine with, with multiple ships and aircraft submarines and that kind of thing, there would be greater opportunities to flank enemies and just get better positioning on them here. Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's still fairly simplistic. So you can still see that, that water columns coming from, uh, from the shots. I like that a lot. We'll continue our turn here. Uh, 17.2. It's not quite 18, is it? Let's give this a shot. Yeah! There are primary and secondary weapons, but there's no point in uh, switching to the secondary weapons because they're little putt putt 4 inch guns compared to these. Ooh, I think you got a shot in the middle there. Yeah, now we're really on fire. That's a good set of hits. Things are not looking good for the hood, people. <laughs> uh, well, let's see here. I'm going to continue my turn. Uh, I haven't run two ships into each other yet. I don't know if that's possible. It should be. Uh, let's see what happens. I think I got one hit on the front here. Hmm. Very interesting, very interesting because 
they're lined up now, so my odds of hitting something are actually really 16.8. Uh, I'm gonna go with this and try and hit him in the middle. Hopefully, I won't land my shells right in between them. <laughs> I think we got a hit there, but. You know, come to think of it, my ships are pretty well together, too. Oh. I got one good one there, I'm not sure, but we are just billowing smoke like you wouldn't believe. Let's see here. 17.9. Yeah. Take a lot more than this to sink that ship. Oh, man, I tell you, this game is not easy. <laughs> it's just not easy. All right, let's do a big swing out here. And elevation is 14. I'm gonna go with 15. Hopefully, I'm sure they'll land right in between the two ships. <laughs> Direct hit, bullseye. So now I got a problem because. The hood is really showing a full target profile. Um, yeah, they got a really good hit there. <laughs> That's what happens when you have no strategy. Really don't have a lot of experience and it shows. So Admiral Canigan should not be uh, running fleets of two ships maybe. I don't know. I do all right with space cruisers, but the ones on the ocean, they can't move in three dimensions. 17.6. Okay. We're going to give this a shot. Uh, I'm sure we got something there, but... Hmm. Uh-oh. This isn't looking good. It appears that our steering is out. Yep, looks like the rudder is gone. Um, wow. This is actually really bad. Uh, what do we got? 14.6? I haven't had this happen yet, actually, where the where the rudder's been taken out. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. That's the first hit on him. Getting their their hits in now. Oh boy. Um, I think I'm gonna make a really sharp turn. And 17.5. That's 18. This looks good. This looks good. Oh. We're gonna issue some smoke. The problem is I'm heading towards the enemy. Uh, actually. And, well, I guess full speed is smart. <laughs> so I might be able to get out of here. Oh, I can't shoot either. Didn't give me any options. So the hood is just done. <laughs> Just a floating target boy now. Hmm. All right, let's take another shot over here. Why are we not getting any data? Why are we getting smoke as our data? Because it can't see? Is that it? Well, I'm gonna guess that to hit is about the same as last time. It's kind of looking sideways over there, isn't it? Whoa! 
and the absence of data. So it's, it's taking a few shots on the side there. You can see it. Uh, boy. Issue more smoke and get the hell out of here if we can. Boy, mobility is down to nothing. Yeah, it looks like the Prince Wagon is, is done. It's really badly listing. So as long as I can keep the Prince of Wales afloat, then we should be okay. Jeez, it's still firing. I gotta try and paste that sucker again one more time. If I can. Right. Getting pretty close now. Okay, we got data again, 13.9, so now we know why my shots went so far over. Let's see if we can just take him out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll take it. Look at that sucker. Yeah, she's sinking. Still got shots to take though, or give. But now I can concentrate on the Bismarck because this ship... Uh oh, that's my ship. <laughs> That's the hood. Now I didn't just shoot at the hood. We know that. Um, that's just what it's selected on. But we'll go out here. And uh, yeah, clearly the Prince Wagon is uh, is having some trouble. Just just saying. Uh, things aren't looking good for the old gal. <laughs> good pasting along the side there. Love the noises, these great sound effects of, of the groaning of the steel as the pressure starts really interacting with it. And down she goes. It's fascinating. It's a nice level of detail. I mean, if you didn't look under the water, you would never see this. And yet it's built into the game. It is going on. Yeah. <laughs> There's some extra fire left on there. It's so dark, I don't think it's made any oil slick, but, um, one thing that actually happened is these turrets would fall right off. They would, they would fall right out when the ship inverted like that, and they would go down to the seafloor. Uh, and when James Cameron did his search for, uh, the wreck of the Bismarck, he found them. <laughs> He's got to read turrets. You know, they'd be they'd be pretty far away from where the rest of the superstructure landed. Oh boy, look at this! Down she goes. Bye bye. <laughs> it's just fascinating to look at. Appreciate that they put some effort into it. I guess she's gone now. Enough's enough. What we got here? That's the Bismarck. So the Bismarck is on fire. She, she ain't doing so hot, but she's still above the waterline. Everything's level. Maybe I'll try and hit the rudder. I have done, like, no targeting at all. To... Try and, uh... Take out specific parts of the ship. And maybe I'll do that now. Let me try and get it on the the butt end here. 17.2. All right, people. We're gonna give this a shot. 17.5. And mm, too far. All right, it's just you and me now. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> I think we dodged one there. Okay, now that I can actually see my ship, I'm going to turn more parallel to it. And I really am going to try and take that rudder out. We've got 14.3 as our, as our magic number. Now, we overshot last time by quite a bit, so I'm just, just going to go straight on 14. short. Which is it, guys? I'll tell ya. While this game is kind of simplistic, although when you start running the submarines and planes and stuff like that, it gets more complicated. Uh, 
I do like the feeling of immersion. I, I feel involved. I feel like I'm actually accomplishing something, you know, or, or dodging shots. Seventeen and a half. Oh, maybe my uh, maybe my targeting was just way off. All right, let's see here. So let's, let's do that. A little bit under eighteen. And overshoot. Hmm. Oh, oh, we got a hit there. I mean, there were flames in a <laughs> a cloud. Ooh, it was a really, really good hit on us. Ow. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ouch. Who's dead? <laughs> uh, oh boy. Uh, I'm going to keep going for that strategy there. Elevation 16.4. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go right on 16 and see what happens. We are going for a very narrow part of the ship, but I did hit it. I'm just not sure. What are we doing? Well, we got a big fire amidships, but we're still level. Alright, I'm just going to go for the straight target now. 16 and a half. I'll just go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we got one hit in the back there. Oh, she's starting to sink. She's starting to sink. Do you see that? This is lower. Ooh, oh, God. Mm, I think they got a hit on us there, even if it doesn't show it right away. Um, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Point three, very, very, very similar. I'm just gonna do that. And only the front batteries can fire. Oh, okay, we got a little minor hit there. And uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, she's not shooting back at us. Sixteen point eight. All right, so we'll raise our elevation a little bit. Keep blasting. Yeah. That was better than it looked. She's still moving, but she is sinking. I mean, you can see. Oh, she took some shots back. I've done that in a couple rounds. Uh, well, there's definitely some wobbling and listing going on here. Things are not good. She's still mobile, though. Look at that reflection there in the water. That's nice. All right. So what do we get? Are these damage reports, I guess? That the propulsion and secondary guns are out and anti-aircraft? Okay. That's nice. How do I get out of here? <laughs> get that far away from me. Some of it's just perspective, I guess. That's the way I had turned the ship. Okay, um, elevation is just straight on at 60 and I'm going to go with that. We seem to be getting a little more accurate now. <laughs> As he fires directly overhead. Well, it appears that both my ships are still working. I mean, it, the 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 hood here is still firing, even though she's half sunk. It's amazing. Funny feeling to not know exactly what's going on. Uh, it's 18 here. 
We're overshooting a bit, I think. Ooh. Did we get one? I think we got one. She's firing, but way off that time. Good. <laughs> uh, okay. What do we got here? 15.5. Alright, well, we've been long, I think, the last couple times. So I'm going to cut it shorter a little bit. Mm -hmm. mm. Still long. Same thing here. I see no reason to adjust course. 17.6. Let's go more to where it's 17 and see what happens. Boy, the hood's got some damage on her. There we go. There. That was a decent shot. She's firing. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, I've lost steering again. This time on the Prince of Wales. I can only. Oh, she's gonna sink, though. I mean, she's going. She's got to. <laughs> Let's see here. I tell you, it's a very engaging game for a, for a simple concept. And uh, it was five bucks on the Steam sale, and I'd seen some videos, walkthroughs before, and knew that I would like it. And uh, you really do feel involved, 17.8. And it is fun to play these sort of historically, uh, maybe not historically accurate, but historically relevant. There, there, there. Engagements. She's going under. She's going, oh, that was nasty. Ooh, did not like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the question is, do we try and get out of here, or do we keep firing? I think I'm going to keep firing. Right through the smoke, 15.4, because if we can hit, I really need to keep track of whether we're high or low or what. Getting, we're getting there. Wherever the the hood and the Prince of Wales are in relation to each other. Oh, okay. All splitting off like in a V shape. Like different. 17.9. I'm just gonna go again with the range that we had last time because that seemed to work out very well. There we go. There. Nice. What's going on over there? What's going on? Hmm. We got a front end out, out of the water. Oh, the sun is rising. That's a nice touch. Remember it was all gray when we started? Very uh, dawn-like. More like the other direction there. Ooh. <laughs> now ships do bob in the water. <laughs> this is true. Oh, it scares the heck out of me. Where's the Bismarck? Oh boy, uh, let's lay out a better ring solution here. 14.8. We're a little bit closer now, so I'm gonna go pretty accurate on that. Let's see. That's good. Yeah, we got a hit in the middle there, I think. Ooh, we got we got steering back. 18.6. This is the hood, I think. We've got bigger guns on the hood. Did we get a hit? Might have gotten one back here. Oh boy, look at that fireball come up. 
Ooh, ooh, oh, oh, <laughs> the pain. <laughs> Bismarck brings the pain. We're done. What does done mean now? All right, so uh, apparently I won somehow, despite my naval ineptitude. Uh, Bismarck was sunk, and the Prince Wagen was sunk, and I sustained medium and heavy damage. But that is a better result than what occurred in real life. Of course, we don't have all the problems that they had in real life or all the variables involved. But uh, uh, there's our after action report. That was the Battle of the Denmark Strait. And this has been a quick look at Atlantic Fleet. It's a regular $9.99. You can get a free version, uh, Atlantic Fleet Lite, L-I-T-E, because it's, uh, it's fancy, it's low calorie, uh, for mobile through the Google Play Store for free. If you want to try that out and play uh, the engagement that I just played, for example. It's actually a pretty complete little game for um, mobile. And instead of using the mouse, use your finger and tap for range and that and it uh, should take you about five minutes to actually learn how to do the basic movements as long as you read the instructions that come with it uh, and there's there's just some pop-up windows that tell you what to do and, and then you can uh, also be on your way to uh, having some naval enjoyment this is Jason Cadigan thanks for watching